Yeah, we on Boss Talk TV. Shout out to E-He, the reason you see me. And for Atlanta-based rapper Rich Homie Quan, whose real name is DeQuantez Lamar. He's known for his chart-topping hits. Lamar was found dead yesterday at the age of just 33. Today's Alex Whitler joins us now with more on what we know, including the details from a 911 call. Alex? Yeah, good morning to you, Ron and Elise. That audio recording was just released hours after the rapper's passing. It details this sad discovery. Right now, there's an investigation into his death, but TM Z has obtained a copy of the 911 call from his girlfriend, Amber Williams. The couple reportedly has children together. According to the call, Williams left the home to pick up their son for, from school before finding Quan's lifeless body on the couch. Just listen to this. Wow, wow. Hey, guys, uh, make sure you like, subscribe to the channel, man. We've been hearing about this now for a few days. We know, you know, Rich Homie Quan left behind her uh, children and girlfriends and all kinds of stuff, and I say friends because there's been some people popping up saying they baby mamas in different states and all kinds of stuff, but I just really, you know, when I look at Rich Homie Quan, I loved his music, I was a big fan of his music, loved uh, some type of way, you know, uh, he had a few of them, it wasn't just some type of way, but that, I remember that was the one that made me really like them old Medusa belts. He had that old Versace Medusa belt on. Some type of way, make you feel some. I, I love the song. So it was a dope song. Dope time, too, in hip hop. People don't realize that, man. We got some dope stamp moments in hip hop. So. Rich Homie Quan has passed away. There's all type of rumors. People are saying that it, it, they feel like it was a setup, some kind of way. There's all kind of stuff alleged being said out here. Uh, that he was supposed to uh, testify at one point, Young Thugger's trial. So there's a lot of different things being said. Woody just talked about him here recently. So he was already in the news. And now this here happens, and now uh, people are coming out to Woodwork saying they got kids by him. It's just a lot of, lot of chaos around uh, the whole event that's done transpired, man. And I got my boy OG Baru, Ayatollah Marv on the phone, man. Man, let me know something, man. You ever seen anything like this back in your day, OG? Man, man, what's up, boss? Talk with the boss is Man, it's man. tough, man. Like I said, the young folk getting out of here, boy, 33 years old. Man, look here, all of my homies was broken. They, if they baby's mama came out talking about they were supposed to be paying on the phone bill or something. Oh, yeah, they was on the run then. They didn't even care too much to even talk we, about. We, we, we had no rich homie quads, but yeah, it's a tragedy. Uh, first, I had really heard about, bro, uh, I, I didn't know too much about him, but Woody was a. Uh, saying that he had shot up his uh, his father's barbershop. Barbershop, yeah. And uh, uh, that, that young thug was protecting him, looking out for him. Yeah, young yeah. Thug was, was real cool. And uh, then when I heard this about him uh, passing, man, that fitting all ain't, ain't no joke. I mean, you know, word on the streets that he was taking these drugs and he got laced with that fitting all and... Uh, his girl came in and found him dead. Wow, uh, and that's alleged, right? Because we don't know. Uh, they ain't uh, ran no tests. Allegedly, allegedly. Yeah. I don't know what he had. Well, I wasn't there. Uh, or he is a dearly departed. Uh, when it was foul play, they sure got up under him, you know, and uh, he took himself out. Wow, you know, like... We've seen different cases where people, you know, have gone out on drugs, whether it was Big Scar, um, whether it was Enchanting a little earlier this year. Um, there's been so many, a litany of gangster boo. Um, they, I mean, they, they, these is crisis moments. There's been people who've been just dying uh, right after another behind uh, a fit and all. They come to find out once they do the autopsy and stuff, man. Did you, have you ever seen such a thing where people want to get high so bad they offing themselves? Oh, yeah. I mean, you know, that was the big crisis in the 60s, OD and off of heroin. Okay. They, they, you know, they was doing... Anytime you take a depressant, a downer, it, it's, it's not no gauge of how... You, you know, you take one pill, then you take two pills, and you take three and four pills, and one day, you know, like right now, they say, you know, with this, with these, they, they cutting these pills with fentanyl, you thinking you're taking one thing and you taking something altogether different, you know? Yeah, and these guys are not pharmacists or nothing. They're not regulated to be dealing with drugs yeah, like this. Yeah, you know, they're they, they making drugs as they go, you know? Well, you know, one of the biggest things that I talked about was the fact of how they chant. You know, there's big songwriters like my boy 
Future and even Rich Homie Kwan talk about taking Percocets and they glorify the moment in the drug oh, lifestyle oh. of being addicted to it or either just being on it. Uh, is, do you think them saying it and singing it like they're doing it and chanting it like they're doing is affecting the communities that they're in and themselves? You know, well, rumor has it that, that what, what the people believe in karma, you know, they, they say the same thing. Uh, um, is there is there a a a, 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 a what, what is it? Uh, is there a heaven for a gangster? Uh, I meet you at the crossroads, and all of them rappers end up dying tragic deaths. That they, they say, uh, Pac spoke on his death. Biggie spoke on his death. So they say the power of the mouth, the mouth, right? Yeah. So, so a so, lot of the things these dudes are saying, they start you know, trying to invest themselves into it and, oh, well, I'm going to take this and see how it really is. And like, like, but, you know, it didn't took him out. So OG Paru with him saying it, just like Pacman was chanting about death. Now he's chanting about drugs that are literally linking you to death. You say there's a similarity in the fact of just the way that they're worshiping it or singing it or rapping it that's causing it to pretty much be something to where it's at the doorstep waiting on them to walk in. Yes, ain't the same. I remember one time I said, brother, I, I, I chanted that I would sell my soul to the devil for a count like Seville, just talking, right? Yeah. I had more Seville's than I had girlfriends. My oldest son died of spina meningitis. My sister got stabbed 182 times. My wow. sister-in-law got killed. My grandmother died. The devil, and when I went back to prison, all I had was what I asked for, that Seville. Wow, man. So your sister was stabbed 182 times? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Wow, 182 times, and 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 this here, like I said, and you had pretty much felt like, okay, I asked for this bill, and I'd sell my soul for it, and, and I sell my soul, so the pie, and I, I had more Seville's than I had girl. I bought my mother a Seville for her birthday. I bought my sister one. I had three. I'm rolling. I I spent 1.5 million dollars in nine months in 1978. By 1980, I was in prison and broke with Jesse Seville. Wow, boy, that is crazy. But you know, that's that. Hey, listen, man, we gotta watch what we say. We gotta watch what we say, man. Thank you so much, OG, for calling in. Uh, I just, like I said, I wanted to just touch bases on the way that. The, you know, Rich Homie Kwan, he left a legacy, but there's a lot of after effects and it's people that's not really getting, you know, uh, you got to have a trust. You got to have a will, even at a young age now, it looks like, because the last four or five guys I've seen pass away have been in their 30s. Mm, yes, sir. And, and, and so we need to be preparing ourselves because whatever you leave behind, it's going to show its head when you leave. I can promise you that. People going to come out to Woodward. People want to know if they're going to be taken care of. You could have been hiding an illegitimate child over here, but at the end of the day, once that once you pass away, they're fearing for, how can I get a piece of this? You've been taking care of me the whole time, but you didn't let nobody know about me. So, you know, these are things that happen, man. God, make sure you get in the comments. Let us know, man. Do you feel like these women should be coming out of the Woodworks trying to disrespect other baby mamas because they want to be seen as the one that was with Rich Homie Kwan. Let us know, man. And also, man, I want to just say, I send a prayer out to his family, his kids, his 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 baby mamas, the true ones, uh, and just a lot of the people that's going through it because of this tragedy. Thank you guys for calling. Uh, I'm calling. Thank you guys for uh, liking and commenting, and thank you guys for listening. It's been another great segment of Boss Talk 101 uh, reviews where the bosses talk. Oh. Boss is talk. Man. Yeah, we on Boss Talk TV. Shout out to E-Heat, the reason you see me.